when we are vulnerable and own our emotions and experiences, can we truly feel empowered to live our lives freely and fearlessly? Now I know I just hit you with a tsunami of words, so let me do it again. Only when we are vulnerable and own our emotions and our experiences can we truly feel empowered to live our lives freely and fearlessly. Now my goal throughout our conversation today is to not only take you through what that statement means to me, but to also hopefully have it resonate deeper with every single person in this room somehow. Now I am about two weeks away from graduating from college with, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> with an undergraduate degree in business at Indiana University. And a huge thing in business that we focus on is interviewing. Whether you're interviewing for an internship, a club, a job, you name it, to be prepared is everything. So as I was in one of my first mock interviews with a colleague, I was asked a question that I had never been asked before. What are some of your weaknesses? Now when I was asked this, I literally laughed out loud and I said, honey, I think you meant to ask my strengths. Well, I'm an amazing leader, I'm great at time management, and I'm super detail-oriented. She looked at me blank face and she said, well, no, I asked about your weaknesses. I immediately got defensive. And I said, why would you want to know about my weaknesses, the things that make me incapable, the things I'm bad at? Let me tell you about what I'm good at. To which she said, well, actually, I would argue that your weaknesses are what make you most capable because they are what make you aware and accountable. Well, the minute that she said this, something sparked in me, something flipped. I had to think back to the root of why I always associated weakness and being vulnerable on the outside to other people with negative value. Well, that's what made me go back to the root of, I had grown up my entire life with such strong, driven women that show nurture and care and love on the outside. That no matter what's going on in here, I will display light, love, and happiness to those that are around me. Well, that's how I grew up. I've always been a giver. I give on the outside to whoever needs it, no matter how I'm feeling in here. So when I ask the question, Okay, if I'm anchoring everyone else around here, am I anchored myself? And the answer was no. So once I found that answer, I had to really step back and take a look at why do we constantly stray away from our weaknesses instead of owning them? And we honestly all have different excuses, walls, and barriers that we put up to processing those emotions. A classic example of this, especially for women, is when we do something and someone says, oh my gosh, that was an amazing event, or you looked so good today, or you're so amazing. Our innate response is usually, oh my God, I looked so awful, or oh, you looked so much better, or oh my gosh, it wasn't even good. We immediately invalidate ourselves in here so that we are insecure out here. We put out whatever we think we can receive validation from others because we have yet to validate ourselves. Well, this made me think to, what is my true blocker and barrier and the wall that I put up? And that wall is, well, everyone else around me is going through painful experiences that are way worse than mine, so why do I deserve to process the pain that I feel? Why don't I just help everyone else around me and deal with my stuff later because mine doesn't matter as much? Well, this really hit me when I was 16 years old. When I was 16, my dad and mom sat us down in the kitchen on a random day in August, and my dad was like, all right, guys, we're getting divorced. I looked in shock, and I was like, guys, it's not April. Come on, April Fool's not now. It's not happening. And my dad looked serious. He said, no, we are actually getting a divorce, but it's a great situation. Your mom and I are going to move houses back and forth. You guys get to stay put. We're going to still have family dinners on Sundays, and we're still best friends. Well, now half of me is like, okay, do I cry of happiness because, okay, they're still best friends and everything's amazing. And half of me is in tears of destruction because the people I had known together for 21 years are now apart. This immediately invalidated that experience for me and I didn't want to process and so I suppressed it. Anytime I was asked about that experience, it's, oh no, it's gonna be okay, everything's fine, we're good because I have a friend whose parents went through financial problems that led to divorce. I have a friend who doesn't have relations with parents anymore because of divorce. And I have friends that don't even know their parents that much because of divorce. Well, I can't say any of those things for myself, so none of them matter what I went through. My pain is not validated. 
Well, that's what's crazy is that the minute that we can actually say that out loud, it makes us realize that all we have is us, right? So if I don't validate my pain and process and allow for it to be mine, I'm not showing people on the outside who I really am. I'm showing them what I want them to see me as, and I'm showing them what I think will validate me because I've never gone through the process of healing for myself. It made me realize that sometimes we always just try and show this strength and this light and this positivity on the outside, even when we're crumpling inside, it can honestly hurt our relationships and ourselves. This was something that hit me huge in one of the biggest relationships that I have in my life, and that's with my little sister. My little sister and I are four years apart, and we haven't always been super close, one, because of the age gap, and two, because, well, we are extremely different women. And I mean that in, I am passion, head in the ground, let's get this all good to the races. And my sister is, let's sit back and think about every way this situation could play out. So oftentimes, if I'm struggling, or if I'm going through something, or if I'm acting annoying, she'll go, Haley, relax, we get it, you're a Capricorn. <laughs> uh, yes, I am a Capricorn. I was born in January, and my sister loves horoscopes and spiritual readings. So oftentimes, if I'm ever in a tussle, or if we're not getting along, or something's going wrong in my life, she'll be like, relax, you're going through retrograde. Take a step back. <laughs> Take a step back. I love her for it, and she's so amazing, but about a year and a half ago, she was actually diagnosed with severe depression and anxiety to a point of suicidal thoughts. When someone that you love so much in your life is going through something like that, something breaks in you, something broke in me. I didn't know how to help her, and I didn't know how to feel, so I did the only thing that I knew how to do. I showed up in that positivity, that strong, that amazing motivation. I told her about all the great things I'm doing in school, all the amazing things she's gonna do. It's gonna be awesome, we're okay. Well, I have found that actually distancing us the most that I'd ever felt with her. I felt a wedge and I didn't understand why. Well, one day I broke down. I didn't know how to feel. I was crying and I was vulnerable and I looked at her and I said, I don't know how to help you, but I love you and I want to walk with you. She smiled and she looked at me and said, Haley, that's what I wanted. I was ludicrous. I was like, I'm crying in front of you. Are you kidding me right now? She's like, no, no, no. You showed up for you today. No matter how you wanted me to feel, no matter how you felt like you had to feel, you just showed up as Haley Skyko. That's what I wanted. And what it made me realize is that the people that we love and the people that love us will accept us no matter how we show up that day. That when we are able to own and feel secure in here, we can feel confident out here that no matter what people around us hear, they will continue to love and embrace us. It made me realize that sometimes when we're weak on the outside and we tell people about our anxieties and our nerves, it helps us own our identity and it helps us share who we truly are. I mean, I can now say that our relationship is happier than ever and she is on a journey to happiness and it has taught me that it is okay to show people how you're truly feeling because that is what grows you stronger with them, not you holding back and being what you think they need you to be. Because we truly are two sides of who we are, right? We are our weaknesses and our losses and we are our strengths and our wins. And we must account and credit ourselves for both halves or we aren't truly who we are fully. Because our weaknesses and our losses, they're opportunities to grow, to say, okay, this is what this made me feel and this is how I'm going to process it to grow and not feel that way again in the future. But our strengths and our wins are also essential opportunities for us to credit ourselves, to say, yeah, I did that. Yes, I'm worth it, and it's okay to be able to say that I deserve that. Because when we're able to look in the mirror and look at ourselves and say, I might not show up 100% for the people in my life today, but as long as I'm 100% me in here and I love that, they will love me and know I am showing up 100% every single time. So before you give everything out there and you're strong and you wanna be whatever you think people want you to be, Ask yourself how you are today. Ask yourself how you can own who you are to better help the people around you and to better have them help you. So when I now walk into interviews and I'm asked that magical question of what are some of your weaknesses, I proudly state 
I am extremely impatient, I care a little bit too much about the details, and sometimes I tend to run at 100 miles per hour. But I am aware, I am accountable, and I am constantly learning from those experiences to continue to make myself better every single day and help those around me do the same. So I now bring to you what I started our entire conversation with. Only when we are vulnerable and own our emotions and experiences can we truly feel empowered to live our lives freely and fearlessly. And I now hope that this encourages anyone out there that is thinking that they are weak or they are struggling or they are in pain. That is what makes you strong if you allow yourself to process, heal, and learn from those situations. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.